Oh my god, guys. Okay, Cocomelon, the most evil channel on YouTube by Sunny V2. Dude, I've been wanting to watch this video for a while because I, I was moving and I didn't have time to stream. So it's a bit old, but I, I, I was so like, I was watching PewDiePie so much during the during the PewDiePie and Cocomelon collab or whatever you want to call it when he had the intros and outros of Cocomelon. And uh, it's Cocomelon, by the way, it is a kid's show, a YouTube kid's t uh, show, if you didn't know. But apparently, uh, something has happened. I don't know what, but Cocomelon, the most evil channel on YouTube, is a video. Now I really want to check this out. So let's go check it out. Sunny V2. My son is almost two and I've been letting him watch Cocomelon. But now I had to get him speech therapy so I can get him to talk. S what? Speech therapy so you can get him to talk? <laughs> there are hundreds and hundreds of anecdotes in which parents mention the exact same problem. The Wait, let me see. My two-year-old is, is my two-year-old is speech delayed and addicted to Cocomelon. Switched to Mrs. Rachel two days ago and he's already saying more words than he hasn't. What? What? How? What is wrong with Cocomelon to make them speech delayed? The Cocomelon show is so insanely addictive. It's addicting. It's being compared to nicotine and causing oh my God. issues amongst the kids who can't stop watching. Children's TV expert Jerica Sands calls it the most damaging show a child can watch, explaining the sneaky ways in which they make the show addictive. Firstly, there's the colors. Take, for example, the, uh, on the bus. The three main colors, blue, green, and yellow, are all. Well, those are all complementary colors. They all complement each other. I mean, it's a it's a great color combination. So obviously, that would be really appealing to to a kid. Let's see, bright green, bright blue, bright yellow. The kids will love seeing that. Obviously, a maximum saturation. Yeah, maximum saturation. Be made any brighter, no matter how hard you try. Extreme saturation is normally used for alerts and notifications, as it's exciting, dynamic, and attracts attention. Yeah. which is why it's also used in slot machines. Cocomelon oh. puts these colors in perfect contrast, making them appear even more vibrant, which is different to, for example, Bluey, in which the- Ah, look at the difference, see? You can see how much bluer this is as the sky here. Yeah, that's totally right. Like the green, the blue, and the yellow is all really high, highly contrasted and saturated compared to this show. Colors instead blend together. Yeah, yeah. Cocomelon's also different because it's highly repetitive. There's a reason they have 38 videos with over a billion views. A child's brain is wide. What? Reason they have 38 videos. 3.2 billion, 3.1 billion, 2.2 billion, 2.1 billion. Oh my God. I didn't know it was that. I didn't know it was that popular. What the fuck? I'm speechless. That's what? How many subscribers do, does Cocomelon have? Hold on a second. How many? Okay, how many subscribers does Cocomelon have? Let me see. 183 million. Jesus Christ. Wow, okay. Videos with over a billion views. A child's brain is wired to learn through repetition, so it feels right to them to watch the same thing over and over oh, again. Oh, okay, Pokemon I see why. uses this in almost every video. For example, in the Yes Yes Playground song, they pick a word to repeat three times in every sentence, pairing it with a subtly repeating background lullaby, keeping children hooked. Literally, no show or movie puts my son into a deep trance the way Coco Melon Oh my does. god, the so they're literally literally just <laughs> they're hypnotizing and brainwashing the child with putting repetitive words dude that's like what that's gotta be like a, a form of like a like abuse or something <laughs> although nobody's forcing them to watch it i mean dude okay so where are the parents i mean why are the parents complaining okay the, the girl at the beginning or whatever say oh my two-year-old is speech delayed so why the fuck did you not stop your two-year-old from watching Cocomelon? It's obviously the, the two-year-old cannot decide for themselves. The parent has to decide. It's completely the parent's fault. There's no, there's no debating that.
second it's on the TV, he turns into a toddler zombie who doesn't see or hear anything else that's going on in the room. This is only exacerbated by Coco <coughs> Melon's subtitles, which have also been a heavy point of criticism. The letters are not educational, I can barely read them fast enough. It's simply another interesting element to capture your little one's attention. Mm. Coco Melon explains in every description, our goal is to help make learning a fun and enjoyable experience for kids, giving you the peace of mind that your children are receiving quality educational content. But people have argued <laughs> that they're teaching exactly what children shouldn't do. For example, in the No No Bedtime song, the baby refuses to brush his teeth, have a bath, put on pajamas, or get in bed. The education is that he eventually agrees to do so, yet a TikTok user was critical, stating, anytime I'd ask my son to do a simple task, he'd say no, no, no. He said, oh my god. <laughs> he just, dude, he's just, Coco Merlin, it had the opposite effect. It was like, Oh, he's teaching the kid to say, no, 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 mommy, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh my god, this is too good. Sitting there watching Coco Melon, which taught him no, 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 and to say no to me. On the topic of education, Jerrica San stated, These people don't give a shit about our children. They care about money. That's it. Your child's cognitive development Obviously. is a direct exchange for their wealth. It's a- dude, guys, let's be real here. It's a fucking YouTube channel. <laughs> Obviously, they want money. They don't care about the kids' education. They care about the money. And there's pretty good evidence supporting this. A New York Times journalist visited Coco Melon's studio, discovering their number one focus is keeping children hooked. Coco Melon's data and analytics team sifts constantly through YouTube numbers to determine exactly what resonates. Should a girl wear black jeans or blue jeans? Should the music be louder or softer? Should the bust be yellow or red? Hey, it's exactly what like Mr. Beast does with YouTube videos. And like he basically test different colors and see what the numbers is or test different things like with a thumbnail thumbnail for example you have the test now where you can have three thumbnails or there's like thumbnailtest.com which allows you to have like 10 run 10 thumbnails at the same time and see which one is working best which one has the most uh impressions and uh, mr beast does this all the time so cocomelon is just doing essentially doing the same thing but with kids Yellow is the answer, as they use a darker method to ensure that they're correct. Cocomelon has a dedicated Distractatron room, in which once a month children are brought here one at a time, and shown a handful of episodes to figure out exactly which parts of the shows are engaging and which are tuned out. <laughs> Wait, so they, you're telling me that the- do the- how do the parents allow this? They literally take a bunch of kids, throw them into a room, and force them to watch a bunch of videos once a month to figure out which parts are the best and most engaging, and then they just edit those- edit the non-engaging ones out. They're literally using kids. What? How are the parents okay with this? Like, what? Next to the TV playing Cocomelon, there's a second screen which plays a continuous loop of banal real world scenes. Oh a guy my god. A coffee, someone getting a haircut, each lasting about 20 seconds. When you know what this reminds me of is like when you see, when you're scrolling through TikTok or, or uh, Reels, Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts, and you always see like, uh, there's a short, like an edit of a short where a guy, uh, like a YouTube snippet or whatever, he he's on like the top right and then on the bottom is some some gameplay of gta a car going down a ramp and <laughs> it's just what or like subway surfers or temple run or something something going it always has to people have like the attention of an ant it's ridiculous everybody has tiktok rot brain now and their kokomo is doing the same thing right here it's crazy dude it's it's crazy that we live in a world now where like people cannot stick on a video for more than 10 for more than three seconds without there being something else along with it to keep their attention it's crazy 
whenever a youngster looks away from the Moonbug show to glimpse the Distractatron, a note is oh my god down. We can see what they're looking at and the exact moment when they got distracted. Therefore, education clearly isn't the primary goal. Keeping kids' attention is, and this is proven by Coco Melon's most addictive element, rapid camera cutting. Ooh. It's crazy how many times the frame changes on Coco Melon. It's the same type of addicting behavior that we experience on a TikTok binge. Yep. It's the quick change of frame that releases that dopamine and makes the videos addicting to watch. Count the seconds between a change of frame. It's basically the same thing as Mr. It's Coco Melon is Mr. Beast for kids. Like it's retention editing is what it's called. If you guys didn't know, it's retention editing. Basically, it's to keep the attention of the user at all times by making so many cuts. This is it's called retention editing. Well, TikToker the circus brain did exactly this. He firstly counts the changes on My Little Pony, concluding okay. there's about six seconds between each cut. He then compares it to Coco Melon. One. Two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one. Oh my god. Two, one, two, one, two, one. In her video, The Night like one second. Melon, Cervantix draws a similar conclusion. She found that 96% of the shots in Baby Shark were shorter than two seconds. She then compares four different animated shows, again finding Coco Melon has the shorter shots. The longest shot on a Coco Melon video was six seconds. The That's pretty long. The longest shot on Arcane was eight seconds. The longest shot on Bluey was 27 seconds. And the longest shot on Encanto was 18 seconds. Which when combined with every other element, creates some terrifying statistics. Dr. Kristen Summer explained that when showing an infant normal video content, they'll focus on the screen just 11% of the time. However, when the video is instead switched to Coco Melon, their screen engagement skyrockets to a whopping 74%. What? So that's like them watching my content, 11% of the retention. And then they'll just 74%? This is like 63% increase. What the fuck? That's insane, dude. This therefore produces stories such as this. I used to volunteer for a preschool and they had song time. A Coco Melon video came on and all of the tots stopped what they were doing, put down their cheese crackers, and remained fixated on the screen for the duration of the video. It was honestly kind of terrifying. YouTuber Saberspark shared his own personal anecdote. He asked to watch a Disney movie with his two younger cousins, who both completely refused and instead spent all day glued to an iPad playing the addiction show. In wow. Coco Melon Made My Kid a Zombie, a mother talks about her son. He would be in a daze while watching it. You could be waving your hand right in front of his face and he wouldn't move. It was almost scary. Again, again. What the fuck is the parent doing? The parents should be monitoring this. It's like a sad story. It's like I knew I was I knew it was affecting him because he would be in a daze while watching it she told it's like what i mean dude you get what you deserve kind of situation like stop the kid from watching cocomelon it's not that big of a deal shut the damn ipad off it's not that hard you have no right to be like saying this i don't understand what am i missing something here i feel like it's so easy just it's like if it's like the same thing if somebody's like being mean to you online all you do is just close the window go on to something else this was also discovered by Sarah Mills 98 who explained when the Coco Melon addiction is so real that my one-year-old can navigate the TV to turn it on by himself. That's scary. However, nothing shows the addiction better than the Coco Melon TikTok trend. Parents will play the show's intro loudly and video their kids sprinting toward the television where you can witness their mood change instantly. The New York Times journalist found something similar. That's the crazy. The Distractatron had shown up in the midst of a tantrum which ended the second he heard the Coco Melon theme song. Oh my no god, dude. To Wheeler, the head of research. 99% of kids, he said, if they're having issues when they get here, once that Coco Melon song comes on, they're like, ah, life is okay. All is good with the world. Obviously, it's like a, it's like a freaking drug. Coco Melon is like a, it's like a drug, dude. It's crazy. It's like, it's like insane. 
It gives the kids insane dopamine rushes. I'm sure of it. It's like, oh, you're having a tantrum? Coca melon. Oh, you want you want you don't want to go to bed? Coca melon. You can go to bed after you watch Coca melon. Or you can watch Coca melon if you decide if you go to bed right after. Obviously, there's a reason for this. Coca melon is so hyper stimulating that it actually acts as a drug. Exactly, that's what, what I just said. happens when you take the drug away? Young children uh -oh. experiencing symptoms withdrawal of symptoms and withdrawal, obviously leaving them completely dysregulated. TikTok Jesus. Pop one filmed what happens when you take the show away. Coca melon. Explaining he'll be. Coca melon is crack for kids. He will be inconsolable for at least fifteen minutes. Are you kidding me? inconsolable for at least 10 to 15 minutes after adding in the description coco melon meltdown is legit jesus Once you have a taste of the cocoa it's hard to break the addiction which this reddit user had experienced even worse my husband and i have been worried about our child i can slowly see how she'd throw violent tantrums at home and in church whenever she'd get bored and would want to watch the show her behavior changes the moment she watches the show and she will not even eat her meals if she wouldn't watch it. After these tantrums end, kids can experience a general discomfort in the speed of everyday life. The more they watch the show, the more their brain begins to expect this intense level of stimulation. <laughs> I see. Basically, Coco Melon overstimulates their brains so much that everything else just seems slow and boring in comparison. However, well, it's like it's like watching it's like suddenly stopping watch stop watching a tick TikTok. It's like you're scrolling it's so fast you're just going to the videos and then you stop and you're in you're you're just there with your own thoughts obviously the world's gonna feel like it just stopped it's like the same thing as just stopping a video game or stop watching youtube shorts or something however the potential consequences get much worse than this as mentioned at the start, it was the cause of a child's speaking problems. With a notable reply reading, same thing happened with my daughter too. She's four but can't speak properly. She knows the words, but she does not like to frame the sentence or speech. She has been watching these Coco Melons or such other stuffs for two or three years. Hope we're not too late. Over on Reddit, a speech language pathologist mm. explained, screen time in general is linked with speech delays for a variety of reasons, but Coco Melon is excessively bad firstly unlike other tv shows or movies it doesn't have a story it's just very yeah. short clips with poorly written songs the kids aren't able to follow the plot learn vocabulary and see the resolution of a conflict supported by infant specialist meg fora there's yeah there's nothing they can learn it's like it's like the kid is just watching a gta gameplay of a car going down a ramp it's there's nothing to learn there's no educational value there like the earlier in the video was just saying that the kid was just saying learn how to say no 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 to his mother and the problem with fast paced tv programs is that we find that little one's language development is slower on the agents of speech youtube channel this is again confirmed the main problem with watching videos on the internet is that they don't know how to use the language that they learn but he adds that four yeah. to five hours of screen time per day can make a toddler completely non-verbal four to five <laughs> hours bet. is obviously a lot of time but in coco melon made that's not a lot of time you should see my youtube watch time Dude, I'm watching like freaking 10 hours a day sometimes. It's insane. I got a YouTube addiction. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to say it. Kidding. Also, when I was a kid, this doesn't this didn't exist, right? We didn't even have the iPhone. We didn't oh uh, what was it? Yeah, no, we didn't have I didn't have social media either. That wasn't a thing. <laughs> I grew up, dude, when I grew up, I remember this is what we did. We went outside. We remember Halo, right? Halo, the guns and stuff. We loved Halo. We do. We used to do LAN parties and you know all that, all the good stuff. You guys know. You guys know what I'm talking about. So we'd go outside with hangers, you know, like coat hangers, and like turn them upside down so they look like guns, right? And then we go play like Halo outside, and then we ride on our Razor scooters and stuff. It was a, it was great. A zombie. And now they don't have this anymore. 
five hours is obviously a lot of time. But in Coco Melon Made My Kid a Zombie, researchers discovered that five-year-olds who watch more than two hours of TV a day tended to have lower attention spans and were 7.7 .7 times more likely to show symptoms of ADHD. That makes sense. And screen times might be even lower for Coco Melon specifically because, as explained by Jerrica Sands, not all screen time is created equal. A child who just watched 30 minutes of Coco Melon and a child who just watched 30 minutes of Trash Truck will look like a very, very different child. Thankfully, here lies a simple solution. Sierra Renee explained my two-year-old is speech delayed and addicted to Coco yeah. Melon. Switched to Miss Rachel two days ago and he's already saying more words and hasn't What's had Mrs. Rachel? Tantrums. Kim Dot It shared an almost identical anecdote. My eight-month-old was obsessed with Coco Melon and having bad tantrums, so I cancelled Coco Melon and only let her watch Miss Rachel and she said her first word within the first three days of watching. Clearly, parents are able to simply change the channel but not before leaving Coco Melon a massive amount Ooh, of dislikes. Oh my god, 4.3 million. To, oh, that's almost 50% dislike. <laughs> 3.2 million. That's insane, guys. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Wait, let me go... They've therefore earned the title, the absurdly popular kids show parents hate, and Coco Melon has actually responded to the criticism. <laughs> that explain... Our shows are not intended to replace outdoor playtime or playdates. They have a place in children's entertainment time, and as with food, exercise, etc., it comes down to each parent exactly. to find the right and appropriate balance for their children. It's the parents' fault, guys. It's always the parents' fault. The parents are fucking idiots. They don't know how to they don't know how to raise their child, okay? They let the internet raise their child for them. They let TikTok raise the child. They let YouTube YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram raise their child for them because they're too lazy to do it themselves. It's ridiculous, man. Our responsibility is ensuring that the quality of the content that we produce is high and beneficial for the development of a child's cognitive and soft skills. It is worth adding that our social media communities are filled with stories of parents who experience firsthand how Moonbug content helps their children. Cocomelon does have a crazy amount of supporters, but it's obvious that some of them are simply ignoring the downsides. My baby learned the alphabet and numbers from Cocomelon. She may not speak a complete sentence, but she expresses her wants through phrases. But is a Coco Melon's responsibility to ensure that babies are talking? Well, no. no. People love blaming cartoons. No, it's not. It's in the end, although Coco Melon is ridiculously stupid, <laughs> it's not their responsibility. They're in it for the money. They don't care about the educational benefit, if there is any. Um, the, re the responsibility falls solely on the parents, okay? You cannot blame Cocomelon for this. You got to blame the parents. Okay, it's actually you want to blame the cartoons and the games like they're saying, but no, it's the parents' fault. In games for raising children, and not the shitty parents that don't step in to stop them from watching so much. Sorry to pause again, but it's the same thing with video games, right? Like you got to stop your kid from playing too many video games or whatever. It's up to the parent if you want. It's like, oh my game, my. My kid plays too many video games. Oh, I think my kid's becoming violent because of the video games. Fucking stop your kid from playing the video games. It's that simple. It's that simple. Much. Cocomelon is actually a really sad symbol of parents giving their children tablets instead of actually parenting and interacting yeah. with them. Ultimately, parents are the people who choose how much their child consumes. Parents don't parent anymore, basically is the summary of this video. <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous man wow what a great video again uh i'm already subscribed go like the video go subscribe to sunny v2 that was coco melon the most evil channel on youtube man what a banger video guys yeah that's crazy man don't don't let your kids watch coco melon that's the moral of the story don't let your kids watch coco melon and yeah make sure to actually raise your kids and not have you know the internet raise them for you